What's up guys, I'm back with another Kydex video. As you can see, since last time I've learned from my mistakes and you know I'm doing this when it's actually you know better lit um, and I can actually see what I'm doing. Uh, I went ahead and I also got two of these small um, like composite plastic clamps. I think they open up to two inches or an inch and a half. Either way, you know, they're good enough for what I need. Um, I was actually pleasantly surprised with how strong these are. These are actually really thick and beefy, so, you know, you get a good grip on things. Uh, so, went ahead and got a metal ruler instead of just trying to use the edge of a book. Um, and these clamps are nice because I can use them when I'm sanding, when I'm cutting. And also here in this case, you know, since I'm trying to score along this larger piece of kydex, um, instead of trying to hold this ruler steady on the entire length of the ruler, I just hold one edge here, and the clamp can hold the other edge, and I could just score along it several times. This piece I've already cut, um, I sized out for my Benchmade rant. Um, this knife normally came with, you know, a leather sheath, which is okay, you know, I'm not a huge fan of leather sheaths, but I don't really like how tight this belt loop is. So I figured, why not make a Kydex sheath for it? Now, I am a little concerned about pressing up against the handle because the handle, it's kind of a really dense and hard rubber. Um, and a lot of times, like a lot of knives, like the Falneven knives as well, if you make a Kydex sheath for it and you have retention too tight along the handle, eventually you'll just wear away at the rubber. So we'll see how this turns out. Um, I also have my browning here. Uh, I might make a sheath for this as well. You know, since I'm doing it, I might as well just kill two birds with one stone. But as you can see, or, yeah, you should be able to see, it's a little shiny. But, you know, using the ruler, I was able to score a much better line as compared to the top part where you see it's kind of wavy when I did a freehand. And I should be able to just snap this in half. Oh, there we go. See, and this time it's, you know, it's relatively straight. Um, I still have a slight gouge here from my initial cut where I kind of wandered off the edge of the ruler, but after that I started just pushing more pressure against the side of the ruler. Um, and yeah, it's worked out pretty well. Um, let's get this piece off to the side. In terms of length, I don't really need it to be that long. You can see here, you know, it's easier to just score this way and then score it in half. I could probably actually get two knife sheaths made out from this one piece because I just need the handles to be like that. So that could actually work out pretty well. I am just going to... I'll see, I mean, I was also doing some, you know, belt hooks like this with the scrap kydex I had left. So maybe I'll, you know, have a little extra on here and then I'll just use the scrap for either a folder or something else. Because when you do fold the material over, you're gonna have to take up more material than what you actually have. So that's why the kydex is actually, you know, more than twice the width of the blade. So I'll just mark it off here. You know, it's just to use as a marker. Um, and just mark it all along there. It's not really necessary. I'm going to keep the ruler here when I cut it. Oops, sorry about that. Get the tripod. Like I said, I could just clamp it up against, I'm cutting up against a piece of plywood. I just, just clamp the clamp here, and then go ahead, hold this end of the ruler, and start scoring. Um, the first line you do, you want to use slightly lighter pressure, just in case you do waver off, you don't want to gouge too deep into it. And it's much easier to control than using um, more pr downward pressure. And after you score it a few times, you can just, you know, press down a little harder. I also didn't go ahead and um, do the hinge press, I'm just going to keep the sandwich press for now. And you know, I think it'll work out pretty well. With the, you know, when I made another sheath um, with the sandwich press as nice as I can control different pressure points with the clamps, whereas, you know, with the hinge press, press near the hinge, you'll probably get the most pressure and on the very, you know, further away from the hinge, you'll get less pressure down. There we go much easier and as you can see here 
it should fit fairly well. After I fold, I should still have yeah, probably a quarter inch on the edge for me to rivet and also cut down. So yeah, I'll get this in the press and I'll get back to you guys after I've um, finished letting it cool down. Alright guys, I have the uh, sheath molded and also rough cut. Um, as you can see, instead of using the coping saw, I went ahead and got myself a Dremel. Um, I'm also wearing a respirating mask, just, you know, there is a lot of uh, Kydex powder and dust that kind of comes up when you're cutting and sanding, even if you're not using a Dremel, so, you know, better off spending, you know, 20 bucks and getting a good 10 pack or so of, you know, N95 rated um, respirating masks. So that's why my voice is a little muffled. I also went ahead and got these work gloves. Um, they're Lictex coated from Home Depot. And they're like six or seven dollars. Um, you know, they protect your hand from the hot kydex relatively well. They're handy for, you know, when you're doing sanding or cutting for because it is latex is relatively grippy. And you know, I don't I don't really mess up my um you know thirty dollar winter gloves. But as you can see with the kydex, um, a lot of people recommend you do it at the lowest setting. I feel that even at, you know, my, my Dremel goes down to 5,000 RPMs. Even at 5,000, the Kydex is still going to melt. It's still going to heat up. Um, but then your cutting takes a lot longer because, you know, with Dremels, they're high speed but low torque. And you're really supposed to let the speed of the tool do the cutting for you instead of applying pressure and pushing the Dremel through. So I went ahead. Uh, I got the 3,000, which is the five speed settings and I had it set at like six or eight and so you know you see it's like relatively rough um, it's not too bad like here you know if you have a Dremel use the sanding wheel you know they have sanding drums uh, I'll use the the higher um, the lower grit sanding drum and you know even this out you know maybe bevel it down a little bit along these um, corners and then I'll use the finding sanding drum with very light pressure, just go right across it, barely touching the edge of the kydex, and it'll smooth it out pretty well. And then I can finish it off with the um, the high grit sandpaper, and then with the Scotch Bright Bright pad to kind of you know burnish it out a little bit. Um, because the Dremel is a little messier, um, I didn't rivet it first. Normally, what I would have done was I would have riveted it first and then done the cutting and sanding. But like I said, because the Dremel is messier, you know, I'd rather do this, get it to its general shape, um, you know, and then rivet it, you know, clean it out first and then rivet it, and then do final sanding to, you know, sand everything out evenly. I also went ahead and uh, cut the, I had the kydex going over the handle, um, over the hump, where the finger guard is. You know, I cut that flat. I'm hoping there's enough space there for it to, um, slide the handle in and out without really pulling apart and tearing the rubber off and I'm hoping that the friction from this kydex sheath will be enough to hold the knife in relatively well anyway I'll get back to you guys after I've uh, cut it down a little more you know there's a little extra material here I'm gonna cut down sand it and then basically I'll show it to you guys nearing its uh, final product completion alright so basically I have the finished sheath right here um, as you can see, I'm still kind of working on um, rivet placement here. You know, this is like a weird rivet placement here, but I kind of figure I wanted something closer here without adding too much bulk towards the tip. So, you know, right where the belly of the blade is, um, you see as I was um, buffing it with the scotch bright, and I removed some of the black finish off the rivet. But, you know, this time at least I didn't sand into it. Um, these two rivets rolled really nicely. They were the last two I did. I did this one first, and I'm not sure if you can see, probably not, but um, it didn't roll properly. Uh, there's, there's like a slight lip over here coming up. Not a big deal, you know, you don't really feel anything. It's not sharp or anything, and it holds the sheath in just fine. Um, and see, as you can see, like, I went ahead and got the, um, the sanding drum on the Dremel, and I just, you know, shaped it out to as best as I can freehand and I went ahead and you still use the sandpaper on a piece of on a flat surface to kind of even it out um, the curve here is a little messed up it's a little funky but I think mainly it's due to this rivet I couldn't really smooth out this curve anymore because this rivet was there 
but I mean there's no sharp edges at all you know it's r pretty smooth it's not like mirror polish or anything but it's better than what I see in a lot of production knives the sheaths they come with as you can see I cut out basically enough of the sheath to reach where the um if you look at the guard there's like a flat portion here at the guard I cut out just so it covers that amount so it won't catch or anything um, this is basically going to be a completely friction based sheath you know nothing's going into the guard to do any sort of retention that's why you don't hear it click or at all like it doesn't really click in and out but it holds pretty well you know like I could shake it you know I'm holding it by a rivet I'm shaking it up and down not a big deal, you know, I, I wouldn't jump out of a plane with this, like, to the skydive or anything. But if I'm going to carry it like this, or even horizontal carry, I'm pretty confident that this knife's not going to come out. Um, it is still wet, I'm not sure if that's giving it better retention because, you know, the friction between the water. I doubt it. Um, it's in and out pretty quick. So long it doesn't fall out upside down, um, it's not a big deal for me. Um, with the original leather sheath, you know, your options were pretty limited to how you would carry it anyway. You, you It was made for right-hand carry on the belt, just um, vertical. So, not the best. With the tech lock, now I have options. I can mount it either right or left side. Um, I can also tuck it in waistband. One thing I didn't like about this was, you know, if you're carrying it in the woods, like, you can have a folding, uh, a fixed blade knife on the on your belt. Um, still, it still kind of sticks out. I much prefer in waistband carry like I do with the browning sheath, and I can do that now. You know, I could put another, make another belt loop here to uh, clip onto my my belt and then tuck this in waistband, and the only thing that sticks out is the handle, which a shirt covers over just fine. Anyway, I'm gonna, as you can see on the respirator, there's like black specks on it. Um, that's from just the kydex coming up uh, and hitting me in the face. You also want to wear safety protection, obviously. You know, I had, I have glasses on, plus I had also um, shooting glasses on, so I was my eyes were pretty well protected. But as you can see on my arms, there are lots of black specks on my arms. Um, just, just the kydex dust coming up from when I was using the Dremel on it. Mainly from the cutter, because the way it was, was spinning, like let's say the Dremel handle is here, it was spinning in this direction and I was up here so the particles are coming upwards not a big deal um, it is kind of all over on my clothing and I'm gonna wash this separately from the rest of the load I mean you know, I'd probably hand wash it uh, I'd probably end up getting either a coat or some kind of apron in the future to kind of cover up better for just that cutting and sanding process so yeah the next video I think I'm gonna put out for kydex uh, sheath making is I guess a roundup of some of the other smaller things that I've done in between this and the sheath for the Rat Azula. And also, you know, probably better up close view of this. And I also changed up the Azula sheath. You can see here, uh, I cut it down so that more of the finger guard area is exposed so I get a better grip on it. But I'll go into that in more details in the next video. Alright, thanks for watching guys.